like I looked at everything in the chapters and stuff. Yeah, okay. Like Do you want to start with um, chapter five? Yeah. Um. Uh. Well, power and leadership, and just like accepting that power is a thing, and it's more about like how you yeah view it and how it differentiates from leadership. Yeah. Um, we'll maybe discuss like which one we feel like we like relate to the most or like rate the highest yeah, person. Like yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I did like the reading stuff so far, just um, and it had you like score yourself and then um, like add it up and then see, I guess, like which power you relate to the most or which one you act upon the most. And I got um, legitimate. I feel like I relate to the most just because, um, like, I feel like um, how it says position rather than in the person. I feel like a lot of jobs you can like delegate yourself. Like there yeah. are like tasks and like um, a system in place for you to be able to like handle things on your own, and that's definitely like how I portray my power too. Like I'm here to like if you need to like lean on me, but I also think that like you know what you're doing every day if you go to your same job. Yeah, you should. Yeah, <laughs> you should. And then the lowest was reward for me just because, like, I don't know. I thought it was – I didn't really relate to having to, like, only rely on something that was, like, valuable to, you know, get rewarded or, like, feel good about it. And I just am more, like, sometimes, like, hard work does go without pay or value and stuff like that, so – I relate at least to that one. And are you right now, are you referring to like your current? Position? Yeah, I related it to my you current think? job. I like, okay. cause I felt like I would probably get the best accurate, like understanding right. of each power if I applied it to that. So. And did anybody else do their current job? Oh wait, did, did you guys, um, some of you didn't uh, answer that response yet though. Yeah, I haven't done, I, ha I need to do that. Yeah, I haven't filled it out either. Well, it's okay. It, you have till Sunday. <laughs> for, um, if you go over the powers in chapter five, it just asks what you feel the top three or what you feel the most mm -hmm. and the least applicable to your current job right now or um, the job that you have after graduation. Um, but, you know, most of us don't really work in a job right now that we want to be working in post graduation. Um, hence why we go to, you know, go to school and be able to get a degree and work in the field that we want to. Um, so I kind of focus more on um, what I want to do post-graduation, uh, which is I want to work in the music industry. Like, obviously, the, the goal would be to be a recording artist and to perform and tour. But, but you know, that's a very um, narrow road to take, uh, regardless of whether I make that or not. I would want to... Uh, work in the industry in you know any facet and because I'm going to school for um, communications and PR it uh, would probably be best if I worked within the public relations sector of yeah. of um, the music industry so with that role I would say the most important or most beneficial source of power would be the information power source just because you have uh, the ability to decide who and what gets certain information and um, you're the face of a company and you need to have credible information to give out to people um, both in and outside of the company so that um, you can continue to represent that company to your best ability and and putting out certain fires as well as keeping people informed on what um how the industry is and how the industry is changing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, right now I'm a server at, at a Mexican restaurant, so it's not really, um, I'm, I don't really have any power or use any power <laughs> there. I just show up, you know, fake smile and then leave. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am like a stay at home mom, which is why I do online school and I've been doing it for the last four years. And um, so I, that's like my main job is watching my son. Um, and I haven't really had like to work for the last four years. Um, Cause instead of doing that, I we save money by not having to pay for daycare if I stay home. But I think about like the job that I want to get um, in the future. 
And I agree with what you were saying, um, Troy. Like, I think all of us in communication majors, mm-hmm. um, I don't like also says how like power you want to like influence people. And that's like been one of the things that I focused on is just like wanting to influence um, other people in a positive way. And I think like that's how power and leadership kind of differentiate for me, like one another. Like I don't really want to tell people what to do or really be told what to do. I think um, I respond better and um like I my voice is heard and I'm not like yeah. working under a boss in a cubicle and I'm like able to speak with people and communicate and um like that would be an ideal work environment for me like in the future I feel like um rather than having to like work under somebody like work with people and like help influence other people um and I like I said I haven't done really like what power I what's top and what I got for the lowest, but that'll be interesting to kind of see when I do do it, what I get for like the top power. Yeah. Well, what what, uh, do you want to do in terms of an occupation post-graduation? I would love to work with kids like in a public school district, probably like a middle to lower class one. Um, And I, I'd always like, I've always liked helping like people less fortunate and um, kind of, I've kind of been like a, I don't know, rock bottom before. So I feel like using my experiences to help influence other people and motivate them and be like, you can do this, you can get through it. Like that's the kind of job that I want. And I feel like working with kids in a school would be something I would thrive in. Um, But then again, like you said, we don't always get the job we want right after we graduate. So build your resume and do the stuff you don't want to do so you can do what you want to do in the future. Um, That reminds me of the uh, reference power source um like role model of power yeah. yeah right it's definitely um one leading by example so if you were to be you know educating uh people that don't have the same resources as you or didn't have them as when you were growing up yeah. i think leading by example and and uh showing what is possible mm-hmm. uh, and influencing people by your positive behavior um would be pretty beneficial in that work or that work environment for those students and for you. Yeah. What about um, Sarah and Alex? What are you guys wanting to do? Um, I'm trying to get into like marketing and stuff. I'm trying to do internships right now, but mm-hmm. um, marketing is like the field I want to go into because I'm majoring in mass um, communication. So I've always wanted to do like public relations and the creative side. Yeah. So I definitely feel like. Um, just like more of a like important but still like relaxed like power based role is something that I relate to more. Yeah. Because like um the core you sit and stuff like that, like it's just I feel like employees don't learn anything from that. And I know being under that type of power, like I've never learned from that. So it's scary just like knowing that you're gonna be punished like immediately yeah. if you don't <laughs> right away. Yeah. Like put in the uh, corner. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for myself, I'm actually kind of trying to do the same thing Troy's doing, and hopefully end up in music some way or the other. Um, I didn't really fill out the whole power thing yet, but I looked at it. I guess for now, for jobs, all I do is I teach guitar lessons where I like play gigs every week. So I guess that put me under like expert power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because that's just like my own knowledge and whatnot. Yeah. Your expertise. Yeah, I think there's another one that was kind of like that as well. The odds of two people who like love music and have long yeah, hair. Yeah, did she look at our profiles or something? Uh, um, okay, let's see. Should we go move on to chapter six, which yeah. was like developing um, or like no leader as the negotiator? Yeah. I thought um, this was like a really interesting chapter. Like, I feel like it's essential to learn about just like how to handle arguments and stuff like while being a leader but like um like when you guys get to it like some of the questions they were asking on the assessment it make you seem it makes you seem like you're very like aggressive or like I don't know because it's trying to figure out if you're like an argumentative person and I'm like I'm like I pretty much even though I rate it as a moderate and argumentativeness I like avoid conflict as much as possible because I just think it's like stupid, especially in the workplace. Like if you have a problem with somebody, you like go in the back and talk it out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like, cause I have had like problems with people, but I'm like, I'm not going to like 
allow you to give me attitude and demonstrate to other employees that that's okay for one. And mm-hmm. two, like, this is so like small and like stupid, you know? Yeah. yeah. But um, when it was like, do you feel like powerful after an argument? I'm like, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I win I do. <laughs> but uh it's like well I I did the um the assessment as well. Um and I thought personally that I was gonna be in the um in the bracket of being more argumentative, um just because I feel like um in the environments that i'm in i feel like there is a lot of potential for arguing like in the service industry obviously that happens on a daily He's basis like, I whether will throw it's, your block at you right like whether there's like like with coworkers or with customers and then you know that can be very prevalent but then like even in my you know home environment like i have the uh, kind of relationship with my parents where it's like they just feel that they are going to be right regardless of whether they have any factual or logical evidence regarding just because like they're the parents they know (laughs) um but yeah so i thought i'm like oh wow like out of all the environments that i'm in like i totally am going to be rated as something somebody more argumentative but i was um more in the moderate um argumentative bracket just because i did take all of those things into account and think like would I, do I, you know, feel satisfied after an argument or do, and I was like, not really. So I usually like worry after an argument, whether that person's going to like have a bitter taste in their mouth about me mm-hmm. after the fact, regardless of whether I won the argument or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I also don't like to, you know, partake in certain arguments where I don't feel that my um, input is going to be credible. You know, if I'm not, I'm not a sports fan. So I'm not like just jump into an argument regarding what, you know, sports team is better than another. But if it's like, if I hear people talking at work about a controversial issue that I, I'm passionate and uh, no, competent no. about, I would absolutely chime in because I know, and I'm confident in the fact that I would win that argument. People would walk away learning something new, you know, yeah. or look from a different perspective. The pros and cons of like arguing with somebody, like kind of what you said, Troy, like, is it worth it? Or is it something that like I'm passionate about? Or is it something that I really like don't care and know nothing about? Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Like we live with my fiance's parents and have for like the last four years and I'm losing my mind. (laughs) Um, Like I'm learning. I, it taught me like pick your battles and obviously living with other people, you have to kind of avoid pros and cons to like, am I going to be upset because there's a mess and I want to like hash it out or do I clean it up and then like not have to worry about it or like, if somebody's like seeing their political views and they said something that like was like deeply offended me, then yeah, speak up about it, especially if you like know enough about it to make like balance. Um, but I'm like somebody who doesn't want to like argue and all right. I'm more like interested in like hearing how other people think and how they, feel. and I just, I feel like I'm always like wanting like mental stimulation. And I like, I like hearing other people's perspectives and points of view. So I feel like, I don't see it as arguing. I see it more as just kind of like understanding how other people view things differently from you. Yeah. And I feel like in an argument, like I thought it was interesting how it was like, do you argue to like learn things or learn new information? And I'm like, that's hard for me to like picture or understand because it's like, if I was in an argument, I'm not trying to listen. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm trying to like (laughs) state my point. So I just, I'm like, I'm not there to learn. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're here to make a point and leave. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're thinking about a very specific type of argument. Though. Yeah, that's like, true. I think we're thinking about one that starts because there's a disagreement. Like a heated one. Um, yeah. Or that uh, somebody that is personally offended um, or that there is like a conflict of interest that they feel can be solved by hashing it out in that way. But I think arguments take many different forms. Um, ones where, you know, it's, you know, let's say, a a relationship, a romantic relationship where there's, uh, an argument happening. Usually in those cases, it's like they're fighting or they're arguing to solve a problem together mm-hmm. versus like having a problem and then trying to find or trying 
to win the argument. It's like, no, we are a couple and we are trying to fight an issue together. Yeah. And that's like, I feel like that's constructive arguing and saying that can happen in the workplace as well. You know, if there's, a, if there's something going on that, that uh, is inflicting on the work environment, like working as a team and having a leader sort of delegate the argument um, is more uh, productive than, you know, hashing it out and then seeing who, you know, can put more valid points into it and potentially be the winner of the argument. Yeah. It's like there's ways of constructive, constructively um, having an argument, which I guess the, the word argument kind of has negative connotations to I feel it. Like disagreements it can better. be pretty productive as well. Yeah, I feel like disagreements a little bit better though at the end of the day. Yeah. It's like yeah. we had like a disagreement, but it, like yeah. you can talk about it and either like agree to disagree or you kind of are just like, okay, I understand that person's point of view or perspective or like knowledge or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that kind of like bleeds into chapter 10 and there's just like, cult, like cultural difference. Yeah, uh, like I, like I said, I like it's me myself and I and my son was today. But like I would imagine in a workplace, especially like a Starbucks, you would come across like all sorts of walks of life, and so I think that also plays a big role as like understanding a culture. Associated yeah. with that, you can get offended by things. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like there have been, and there's like, and it's even with like customers too and stuff because it's like we get taken advantage like quite a bit and like I live yeah. in California. So literally it's like, so, oh, God. so, di- so diverse here, but like yeah. customers get mad when it's like, I don't know, like if there's something legit wrong with your order, like, of course we want to comp you and like take mm-hmm. care of you and everything. But it's like, we have people that come in on a regular basis trying to like scam us and say their drinks are wrong. And then like, oh, God, they look at us different, like, you know what I mean? And get mad at us. And they're like, you just like, are like I've had coworkers be called racist and it's like no you know what yeah. I mean like I still have like a job to do like you can yell at me or however you want but yeah. like it's also like you're clearly just like panicking because you're trying to get like money or you know what mm-hmm. I mean or like whatever it's hard, it's but it's like we have to deal with it in a very like calm matter and like obviously not take it to heart or like not think about it too much because it's like people are just gonna get angry when they're not getting their way I wouldn't be able to deal with that environment. I would yell at somebody. I worked for Starbucks up until January. I worked there for like two years. And then when I came down to like my last semester, I was like, you know what? I'm going to venture off and and do other things. I can't wait to leave. I leave in August. There is your is your um is your work environment at your Starbucks location? Are you guys predominantly women, or or is there a mix? Um, um, I'd say there's like a pretty good mix because like all the managers in our district are men. And Mm -hmm. so, um, and we tend to like my store, well, I guess like our area specifically, we tend to hire younger. So there's like a lot of, well, I would say boys, but guys that are (laughs) um, between the ages of like 18 and 20 for us. So, um, but like, yes, it is a little bit more girl like based. But I've mm-hmm. also worked at other stores where there's only been two men versus. So, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. A predominant women-run type of industry. But yeah. um, I, there is like there's a good balance right now between men and women. But mm-hmm. I see. I would say the diversity is more on like age range because we literally have like 18 year olds working for us, and then we have someone who's like almost in their 40s. So it's like super, yeah. super in that way. Well, the reason I asked is because um, with uh, in the TED talk that we watched for chapter 10, they discussed like gender diversity in terms of how, you know, out of even like the Fortune 500 companies, only 21 companies are, uh, you know, have a female CEO. And um, so, and w- with my experience at Starbucks, like for the two years that I worked there, like, I was almost the only guy in my shift uh, every day. Mm-hmm. Um, they only had like maybe three or four guys employed at a, at my store and they all worked at night. So I was like the only one in the morning, the only guy. Um, which to me, I'm like, this is, I mean, this is what women must feel like in <laughs> every, literally every other work environment, which was not, I mean, it was never a problem for me because, you know, I feel like that was, 
there is a um a common ground amongst most employees and yeah. like the work environment was a lot better and there was less conflict especially amongst people that were um younger yeah that you, when working with opposite sex at, at like a teenage age can be um can can you know conflicts can arise but uh for the most part, I really enjoyed working in like an all female <laughs> work environment. Yeah. And if I could find a way to do that, like in the future, that would be <laughs> really incredible. But like, you know, looking at the numbers and looking at the statistics from the, from the TED talk, like the amount of women that are not employed and um, in these fortune 500 companies and specifically in, um, in positions of superiority is really like, mind-blowing like that's why they refer to this as like the glass ceiling like, like there's only yeah. a certain limit that women can obtain within an industry yeah. because that's held by you know predominantly yeah. um you know white men that's why i thought this chapter was interesting though because like even though it did discuss like that type of diversity it like also discussed how to handle it and how yeah. to like, approach it you know what i mean when you do recognize it or like mm -hmm. it yeah. is very like predominant in your environment yeah. Yeah. Any last I also think comments? that narrative's changing a lot too. Like women yeah. are definitely in like a time of empowerment, and I for sure see like that changing. Like ten years from now, it'll probably be like totally different. different. Which is awesome. Yeah. Exactly. So um, we've reached our time limit. Yeah, right. Any last are comments? Oh, last uh, comment. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Do we have that group thing this Sunday? Is that like Wait, assignment or whatever? It, we have to turn in our um, our five terms that we're going to use um, for our group assignment. Is it five? Uh,